Welcome back to Gruber Motors. I'm your host, Pete Gruber, and today I'd like to take you back in time and explore the history of the electric vehicle. Over time, they have evolved into some of the most technologically advanced vehicles and are starting to take over the global auto market in this century. Since we're in the middle of a massive transportation disruption, converting from combustion engine transportation, or fossil fuel burners, to electric vehicles, one might assume that EVs are a new phenomenon, but that is not the case. Both fossil fuel burners and EVs were in use at the turn of the last century. Some historians estimate that around a third of the cars on America's streets in 1900 were electric while some sources claim EVs even outsold combustion engine cars in 1899 through 1900. These cars were city dwellers only though, with ranges and top speeds in the teens. But let's take a look way back and see how EVs lost their share of the car market and have had such a long and difficult road ahead until just recently. As many car enthusiasts know, the first automobiles were invented and perfected starting in the late 1800s by names you may recognize. Carl Benz, Ferdinand Porsche. But why did the gas-powered automobile eventually dominate the market? Well, let's look at some history. By 1830, a Scotsman by the name of Robert Anderson invented a motorized carriage using galvanic batteries that weren't rechargeable and needed to be swapped. It moved at a speed of four miles per hour, and this was the first sign of an electric car. By the 1890s, major cities with concentrated populations across the globe were dealing with sanitation issues, arising from horse-drawn carriages and what propels them, with dung and defecation in the streets. Health hazards from piles of excrement, flies and insect infestations affected air quality and elevated respiratory problems for city dwellers. As a result, public health issues in major cities like New York was becoming a primary concern, with one turn of the century statistics showing that over 20,000 people a year died due to, as they called it, maladies that fly in the dust. Rechargeable lead-acid batteries weren't invented until 1859, and it wasn't until 1884 when Thomas Parker helped design the first rechargeable production electric vehicle. This was the beginning of a new era for electric vehicles. It wasn't until the late 1890s that people started to notice electric vehicles, however, giving some credit to the Electrobat being the first successful electric vehicle. The Electrobat entered production that year and even received help on improved axles and bearings from a man named Walter Baker. The fastest vehicle entering into the new century were not gas-powered, but were either steam-powered or electric. By 1898, an electric vehicle in Paris was recorded going 39 miles per hour, making it, at that time, the world's fastest vehicle. Baker was later credited for creating the fastest race car in 1902 called the Electric Torpedo with a top land speed record of 102 miles per hour, later starting his own car company called Baker Electric, known for designing taxicab EVs. Electric cars proved to be popular with women. Hand cranking in order to start an internal combustion engine car was the gasoline's car biggest pain point as it required both physical strength and was actually fraught with danger. A cranking starting attempt gone wrong could break arms from backfire, dislocate shoulders, and shatter teeth. Electric cars, on the other hand, started with the flip of a switch and rarely broke down. So why did gas vehicles, albeit slower, end up taking over dominance in the car market? One simple concept affordability. Folks in this innovative and pioneering space like Ferdinand Porsche, whose first P1 car was actually electric, eventually discovered that creating an internal combustion engine car was much cheaper and more sustainable in the long run. 
Although electric cars took up a whopping third of the car market in the early 1900s, the eventual overturn to fossil fuel burners was imminent due to simple economics. Lower costs created a fast and steady decline due to drops in oil prices and another important factor, mass production techniques credited to folks like Henry Ford with his Model T assembly line. The era of electric vehicles like the Baker and Detroit, electric taxi cabs, and vehicles like that slowly faded away. There was a story printed about Henry Ford even partnering with Thomas Edison on a mass production EV project, which inevitably failed due to high cost and inefficient batteries. Almost a hundred years later, Ford Motor Company is making that same leap for mass EV adoption in the car market. Electric vehicles were then put on hold for about a decade after the 1930s due to the world wars and people not being as concerned with environmentally friendly means of transportation. Here are some compelling reasons why. Electric cars at the time cost an average of $1,700 in 1915 compared to Ford's Model T at $600. Despite the gas cars only had a range of around 20 to 40 miles, Studebaker and Detroit Electrics went 80 miles. Eventually, the gas cars won out because of simple economics. Until the Bendix starter motor came along, gas-powered cars had to use a hand crank to start their engine, and electric cars required very little maintenance besides charging. Oil prices were low in the early 1900s, and costs to produce nickel cadmium, an alkaline battery, became more expensive. We could gather up information on conspiracies about the large oil companies working with the big three automakers like GM, Ford, and Chrysler, and allegedly wiping out electric cars from the market by 1935, but it's mostly opinion and hearsay. What we can tell you confidently is that electric vehicles once dominated the car market and kept their fair share of historical presence. A major shift to EVs is occurring rapidly into the next few decades, and this time, the advantages are no longer evenly matched between fossil fuel burners and EVs. Growing environmental concerns also make the switch to EVs and clean energy alternatives imperative. Once again, thank you for watching our videos. As leaders in the EV space, we will continue to deliver meaningful and provocative content, providing historical perspective to help keep you entertained and informed. Be sure to subscribe and check out our other social media platforms, including TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. Again, I'm Pete Gruber. Thank you for joining us.